Yeah. Why is the government doing nothing to lock down this country that bears any relation to what most other countries are doing? Why is it that Spain, that France, that Italy, that Belgium, that all these other countries around us in Europe are in almost total lockdown and we are seeing these catastrophically stupid scenes all over the country of people piling into pubs last week where the Cheltenham Festival wasn't cancelled. We've seen all weekend people going out, partying like it's a bank holiday and still the Prime Minister stands at that podium and says, my advice is that you don't do this. People are not listening to his advice. They want clear direction, these people, because they're too stupid to make that decision themselves. We are risking lives, in my humble opinion, and by all means, tell me I'm wrong, but I think every day we are not locking down properly as a country. We are putting the very health workers that you're talking about at greater risk. Well, I share your frustration, Piers, and over the weekend, I signed new laws to allow police to enforce the bans on uh, pubs and clubs and restaurants. And as we've seen, uh, you know, the number of people not following the advice is incredibly, is incredibly damaging to the effort to stop the spread of the virus. How are you going to feel if the UK death rate explodes like it has done in Italy because you simply didn't lock down the country properly and because you allowed non-essential workers to all stream out to work. Will you feel responsible as a government for that? Well, look, these are very difficult and fine judgments, but we have to be guided by medical opinion from the chief medical officer and the chief scientific advisor. We're fortunate to have world-class advice, and it is essential to implement each of the measures at the right time for this country. Each country, as I say, is on a different course. We're at different stages of the virus. We believe that we're taking the judgments at the right moment. Of course, we'll only know Mr. whether General, that was you're right. You're building in field due hospitals. Course, but that's what we believe you're that we're building doing. military style field hospitals in this country with thousands of beds because you know what's coming. You know a, a virtual form of apocalypse is coming. Last week, the deputy CMO said there comes a point in a pandemic where testing is not an appropriate intervention. Now it's the priority. Public message, utter confusion. Mm. How, how could we have got this so wrong? How is it that two weeks ago we were told we're not going to be testing anyone apart from seriously ill people in hospital when other countries like South Korea were testing as many people as they possibly could? Nobody can understand why we got this so wrong. Can you explain? Well, uh, uh, our position has been that we wanted to get as many tests as we possibly can. We're working internationally and with British manufacturers to do that. The first priority on medical advice was to test those patients in critical conditions in hospitals so that you know what their condition is and therefore how to treat them. Now that we have uh, capacity over and above that, we're able to begin to test NHS staff. That's absolutely right. This weekend, we tested a small number, around 900 NHS staff, but we believe we can now begin to test thousands Mr. Jenrick, of I'm so sorry day. for interrupting, but you are saying the same thing over and over again. We know you are testing in hospital, the most serious cases, and we understand why. We know you are trying to test NHS workers, but NHS workers, a huge cohort of them, are not being tested. We have known about this for months. You've already admitted that we were at the back of the queue when it came to get tests. We have been caught short and nobody understands why that is. Why didn't we get, when the WHO said test, 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 why didn't we get testing up and running so that we could comprehensively test out in the community like they're doing in Germany? What is the reason? other than we just weren't prepared? Well, I don't think that's uh, a fair analysis, although I accept that we do need to ramp up production very significantly. Uh, it isn't easy to procure the tests in a global pandemic because there's a great deal of demand. Some countries, you mentioned Germany, have proved uh, more able to get tests. So that's partly dependent on their, the manufacturing base in their own country. Different countries have different healthcare manufacturing strengths. Well, the truth... OK, look, President Macron <laughs> in France said to his people yesterday, were we prepared for this crisis? Not enough. 
Let's be honest, we lack gowns, PPE, disinfectant gel. We weren't able to dis distribute enough masks. Like you're seeing delays, weaknesses in our logistics. What uh, mistakes has uh, your government made? Well, I think we did have a generic plan for pand uh, a pandemic virus like uh, flu. In terms of uh, preparedness, we did have a lot of stocks. I think what's fair to say is that they were not getting distributed around the country as quickly as we would like. Uh, we also continue to procure, uh, but also we recognise that we will need more PPE in the future, having distributed... Okay, just to clarify, well though, the question I asked million. you was, in the spirit of Emmanuel Macron admitting to a series of errors in preparedness, what errors in preparedness are you prepared to admit on behalf of the British government? Well, I've just flagged that I think we have a plan which is largely being well followed. You've told I've me you have a plan, but the, the plan well, has left... The plan, with the respect question. to you, Miss Coffey, the plan uh, can be any plan uh, you like, but the plan has left NHS frontline workers chronically short for much of this crisis so far of the right PPE. We know it has left care workers chronically short as we speak now of the right PPE. Uh, we know so that we had no win near... Well, let me finish. Why you let, me let me finish. No, I haven't finished my question yet. We know that we had nowhere near enough testing, and now Sir Patrick Balance, who's the Chief Scientific Officer, says that has been a problem and we need to ramp up the testing, and that's become crucial. We know that we had not enough ventilators. We were begging other countries like America for ventilators. When you say that we had a plan and you're not prepared to admit any mistakes in that plan, I say that is clearly, self-evidently, ridiculous. Piers, as I say, uh, we have a plan... Uh, we're conscious we have more ventilators than is currently needed. So there are some spare ventilators, but we know that we need more. That's why we opened up the ventilator strategy. It's why that ventilators are being designed and are being tested right now, that patients across the country and the public won't want ventilators that don't work. So we need to make sure that they have been tested We don't want care workers going into care homes today. We don't want care workers going into care homes today without the right PPE. The reason why they haven't got it, many think, many critics of the government think, and I would be one of those, is that we had such a complacent attitude to this that while other countries were locking down and preparing properly, we were sending hundreds of thousands of people out to the Cheltenham Festival, out to football matches, out to pop concerts. That's why we're so badly prepared, because we spent weeks refusing to accept the severity of this crisis. Is it true that 4,000 people have died in care homes? Uh, so we have been working incredibly hard. I just, um, I, I'm not, sorry, Miss Whaley. It's yeah. not a question about how hard you're working. I assume you're working hard. You're the care mm -hmm. minister. It's your job uh, to work hard. Please stop telling us how hard you're working. What I want to know is, is it true that 4,000 people have died in care homes? Yes or no? I, I wasn't actually talking about me personally. I was talking across... Uh, the whole of health and social care across local authorities, across care providers and their representatives, working to make sure that we're doing everything we can to protect vulnerable people. Yeah, well, I assume you're doing all that, but is it true that 4,000 people have died in care homes, yes or no? OK, well, I'm glad you appreciate that we are doing that. I think it's really, really important to take the steps that we no, can. I'll tell you what's really important is that you just answer straight questions. Is it yes, true that 4,000 people... Why are you laughing? I'm coming you? to ask your question, but I, I'm not... I'm, it's what, what do you find funny about country. this? I don't think it's funny in the slightest. Well, why do you keep laughing, think... then? I'm not laughing at all. I literally just asked you, is it true that 4,000 elderly people have died in hospital and all you can do is laugh? What's the matter with you? I'm not laughing. Please don't suggest for a minute that I'm laughing. We literally like just saw you laughing. OK. It, I have not been, but it feels like you're shouting at me and not giving me a chance no, to I've answer. I've asked you a question three question. times now and you won't answer it. Is it true... Let me try one more time. Is it true that 4,000 people, elderly, vulnerable people, have died of coronavirus in our care homes, as the Daily Mail front page says? So the, the data we have from the ONS, which is the, uh, the, the, the source of, of um, robust, reliable data, uh, ha has tells us that up to April the 3rd, 217 people died of coronavirus in care homes. I believe, because I've been talking to uh, care providers uh, and representatives of the care sector, uh, that since then, very sadly, very sadly, more people have died in care homes. How many? And, and we are working to make sure that we have that data, but it's really important that our data is accurate and timely. Well, how many more do you think may have died? Give me, give me a ballpark. 
you know, I don't think it's appropriate for me to give you a ballpark figure for something as serious as this. What's appropriate is, is that you, as the care minister, should have some idea, some idea, of how many people are dying of this virus in care homes. But how many health workers and care workers in this country have so far lost their lives to COVID-19? The figure for that, uh, Piers, is 49. And obviously, every single one of those cases represents a human tragedy. We are determined we will understand in each case what has happened. You don't even know are... how many have died, though, do you? Because it's over 100. No, that is the official government statistic. But I've we know, again we know from reporting in the media, and thank God we are doing this, that it's over 100. So you are actually underestimating it by 50%. You think it's under 50. The real figure of every reported death that we have seen, which are demonstrably people working in the NHS or care workers, because all their stories have been published, and the fact they died of COVID-19, it's over 100. Why do you continue to have a, an accounting system that makes it look like the situation is half as bad as it is? The figure is 49 for the NHS. That's 49, 49 confirmed. Clearly, we work to reconcile all the figures. We do not, when someone is in hospital and tragically they die of PPE, always know their occupation at the outset. So if they've worked in the care sector, for example... Why don't you just read, the, we read the newspapers in... and you'll find all the information you need? They're being published well, on a daily basis in well, every we, paper. We, well, with great respect to uh, the newspaper industry, it doesn't quite hold to the same standards of data collection as the government. Oh, it so seems to it, me it, your it, data collection is absolutely appalling. Let me ask you another question, which I asked a minister ye yesterday. How many people in care homes in this country have lost their lives to COVID-19? We are collating that data so that we get an accurate figure rather than fuel speculation. It's well, obviously me, really What's the current that figure that, you're, that you've got? Well, we know that the total number of deaths in the UK is... is, is I didn't ask you that. I said, how many people have died in care homes? Our, our most vulnerable well, elderly people. We just interviewed I'm trying, I'm trying, a wonderful man in a care how... home. I just need to know from the British government yeah. how many people have died in care homes from COVID-19. It's not a difficult question. Shouldn't be I'm difficult to find to... out. So we know that testing is really important. And so we have been working hard to ramp up the testing capacity in the country. Yeah, I don't want to hear about uh, your ramping exactly up, though, Care Minister, with respect. You're not ramping it up. I've just told you, you've done 18,000 yesterday and that is less than you did 12 days ago. So when you keep saying you're ramping things up, actually, you're not. You're going backwards. Do you see? So we have trebled the amount of tests that we can do since I'm, the beginning. You're not doing them. People and can't get to you're them. You're doing 18,000 a day, which is less than you were doing 12 days ago. Well, if you'll let me finish speaking, but you're I will answering different questions. To, you keep well, talking about capacity. I'm asking you how I'm many you've you, done. I'm giving you the context and explaining both sides of the equation. One, and I won't say it again because you will probably interrupt me. Is um, access is the capacity, and the other is the access to tests uh, and increasing the number of people who are eligible to come forward and get that testing. So we start off with patients in hospital and then NHS workers. We extended it to those working in social care, um, and that's those in care homes and those providing domiciliary care. Um, I'm looking at whether we can extend testing to uh, personal assistants who are employed by people who pay through direct payments. And we're also extending it to other key workers. So, for instance, you should those have been doing all this weeks ago with respect, Care sector. Minister. And the fact you're still doing less yesterday than 12 days ago shows me this 100,000 figure was just plucked out of the air and is complete nonsense. Why, why did we downgrade COVID-19? from high-consequence infectious disease, HCID, uh, on the 19th of March, we downgraded it from that so that a, a lesser amount of PPE was required legally for our health workers. Why was that? Uh, we have followed the science on this throughout, that, you know, we have been absolutely transparent about our figures. I'm just asking you why, why that decision was I'm taken. I'm accusing us of massaging, massaging the figures. But we've been absolutely transparent about the data precisely because we understand that we need the public's trust on yeah, this. Okay, no, if, you, if you don't mind answering the question, the question was very straightforward. On the 19th of March, on the 19th of March, the UK downgraded COVID-19 from HCID, which is the high consequence infectious disease category, which requires a very high level of PPE legally for health workers, 
it was downgraded. I just want to know why. Why was it downgraded? We have been following scientific advice on this throughout. We've been absolutely... No, you just said that, but what, do you know why it was yes. downgraded or not? I'm not a scientist, Piers. I, I, You're a you government know, minister in charge of not safeguarding. Chief medical uh, officer. Well, you I'm can laugh. I don't know why you all keep laughing when I talk about this. It's not funny, is, is it? You just no, laughed again. No, it's not. And I know you accused another colleague of laughing. You've literally and, and... We've just seen you laugh. Yes, These are laughing. not trivial I'm matters, not Minister. Can I go and see my two sons I haven't seen in 10 weeks? Can I go and see them today and maintain two metre distance? Yes or no? Um, as, as far as I would be concerned, I do not speak for the government. As long as you maintain social distancing in, in, in what you do, okay. that will not this allow the... the problem, the... Andrew Bridgen. You see, what you've just said is completely against the new rules, as stated. So there you are, a Conservative Member of Parliament who thinks you know exactly what Boris Johnson has been saying, and yet you've just told me to do something I'm not allowed to do. So this is the problem, isn't it? There is no clarity. It's a load of old flannel talking about controlling the virus, and you, as a leading, high-profile Conservative politician, haven't got a clue about what these rules actually mean. And you're an MP. You're, guy part, you're part of this. Piers, I did hear your diatribe against the Prime Minister earlier on. What you've well, got when to you remember... say diatribe, let me explain what my diatribe is. We have, according to the government's own graphs, and you can spin them any way you like, the second worst death toll in the world, and that's just the deaths that we're declaring of 31,000. The real figure, according to any detailed analysis of the ONS figures, is over 55,000 people. It's an absolute national disgrace when you compare it to almost any other country in the world.